Hey, I'm Steve Krentz for Guitar Gathering, uh, based here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a professional guitarist here, and I wanted to talk to you about how to practice guitar. One of the most fundamental things that we can do as musicians is to practice. And what we find ourselves with guitar is there's a, there's a wrong way to practice, where we waste a lot of time and we just don't get very far in our in our uh, musicianship and then there's a right way to practice so with, that's what we're going to talk about now there's a pdf that goes along with this so uh, take a look in the youtube description down below and you can download that pdf that goes along with this short relaxed lesson on how you should practice i've been playing guitar for 40 years now probably more and uh, been playing professionally for the, for uh, 30 of those probably, and uh, so I have done my fair share of practicing, and I've found a few keys that work. So uh, these aren't just you know fly by night uh, concepts. These are you know from 30 years of professional playing. This is what works, and so what we want to try and make the most of our practice time so that every minute counts, because everybody only has a limited amount of practice time. So let's get into the key uh, things I want, you to, I want you to think about. First of all, before we even get to the tips on what you should practice, you got to think about um, most folks have a tendency to grab their guitar, work on a couple of things, maybe for 5, 10, 15 minutes, uh, on some sort of sporadic basis, then they may, you know, kind of surf YouTube and look at guitar videos for the rest of it and wonder why wake up uh, two months, three months, 20 years later and wonder why they're no better on guitar. Uh, that's because we're practicing wrong. Uh, we're practicing in a way that's inefficient. So here are some things that you need to think about when you're practicing. All right, this is, I'm going to give you nuts and bolts things. Here's the deal. When you're practicing, you always want to be reaching. You always want to be striving for that one thing that you can't do. So we don't want to be practicing playing things that we already know. There's a place for that. There's a place for rehearsing things that we know, but it's not really practicing. That's stuff we already know. When we're practicing, we always want to be reaching for that thing that is just out of our grasp, just on the edge of our ability. So that's we don't want to waste time going through 45 minutes of licks and intros to songs that we learned back in high school and call that practicing. You're not getting anything done. You're just wasting time. You want to go right to the aspects of, of your ability that you want to learn and work on that. It's hard. It's, it's frustrating to see your faults and all of the things that you, you trip on as you're learning to practice, but that's where the real work is. It gets done. So don't fool yourself and think that you're practicing if you just have your guitar in your hands. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. So let's get into some keys on to, on to it. Practice basics. Folks ask, how often should you practice? Well, if you're just an average musician, uh, uh, amateur musician trying to get better at it, you should be practicing. You know, at at least 20 minutes to you know, 30 minutes on for an average practice session. If you want to go higher than that, go up to an hour, great, that's fine. But if you only have 20 minutes, I'll take that. That is, that is a good starting place. You can get a bunch of things done in just even 20 minutes. Okay, And I would work on trying to practice five out of seven days of the week. You don't have to do all seven. You don't have to do all of that. People get all worked up on that. But do it about five days out of the week. If you just do grab your guitar for two hours on a Sunday afternoon and, and play guitar while the football game's going on, you're not getting anything done. You would get much more done if you did 10 minutes five days a week or, or 20 minutes five days a week, which is still less than two hours of, in your hand, uh, two hours of guitar in your hand uh, while you're watching the game. Um, you'd get more done in 20 minutes than you would um, in doing that. So, so that's the first key. Consistency. Consistency. How often should you practice? I'd say about 20 minutes a week. Uh, when should you practice? Well, um, you want to practice at a time that your mind is fresh and that it's active. Now, having said that, is that the same for everybody? No, it's not. It's not for you. It may be early in the morning. That's when your mind is, is fresh and is able to receive new things and, and, and conquer new things on the instrument. 
For others, it may be later in the evening after the, the cares of the day have settled down and, and, and the kids and, and work and all that sort of stuff have settled down. You finally get a few minutes to yourself. That may be your time where your mind is finally relaxed and ready to learn. Find, and think about it for yourself. What is the time for you that you need to do that? And that's when you should practice. When not to practice? Well, when you're tired and when you're, when you're wanting to do something else and when you're distracted and all that sort of stuff. You're not going to get anything done. Find a time for you. Whatever your learning style is, find a time for you that you can be, your mind is fresh and ready to learn. That's when you should practice as far as what time of day. Uh, where should you practice? That's a good one. Hey, you want to find a place that you can relax and concentrate. You want to get away from the, 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 the distractions of that are everywhere around us, your phone, your, 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 your uh, computer, and all that sort of stuff. You want to get away from the distractions of all that because they'll sure distract you and you'll be gone forever. Uh, surfing YouTube when you, when you could be making progress in your musicianship. Okay, so you want to find a place that's away from that. I don't care if it's just a corner. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but it needs to be a place that can be dedicated to where you are learning. Set it up with a music stand. Have a music stand there that you could do it, that you could put your materials on instead of like a coffee table or something. It's well worth uh, spending a few bucks and getting a music stand and some tools around you, a metronome or uh, uh, pencils and things like that, things that you can write down. Now, in the PDF that goes along with this, I've given you a practice log in the very back. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. But th having a practice log around where you are practicing is a good way to is a good way to keep you on track when you practice. Okay. Um, take a look at the next page, page two. Okay. Okay, Steve. I know I should practice 20 to 30 minutes or whatever, five, seven days out of the week in order to make progress. I know I should do that, but what do I, what, what does that look like? Okay, here, I'm going to lay it out for you. This is exactly what this should look like, okay? This is, again, not my opinion. This is the opinion of somebody who's done this for a long time and done this for a living. This is how things get done, okay? The main aspects of guitar playing are your technical things, can you move your fingers fast enough, your scales, your, your chords, things like that? The second part of it is songs. Can you then apply that knowledge of the good knowledge of chords and scales and whatnot into songs so that you're making music? The third aspect of it is um, improvisation, being able to take something and just create music from it. That's another aspect of musicianship. So there's kind of three, there's three tiers that we need to cover when we practice. Each one of them is important. If we do only technical practice, scales and chords and things like that, next thing you know, you wake up and you hate practicing. It's like a prison and you don't want to do it and the metronome you hate and you, you're not getting any enjoyment out of it. If you go all technical, all technical. Other folks go all songs. Hey, I'm just going to play songs. I don't want to bother learning new chords. Well, next thing you know, you're playing the same three chords you've been playing since high school and you, you can only do a few things on guitar because you're not learning any new technical abilities. But you've got a few intros and a few songs that you can play. So we need both. The other aspect of it is, hey, can you solo? Can you play something for us? Uh, I don't know. I can't do that. Part of that is improvisation. Being able to create something musically and some concepts that you, you ought to be able to, to solo or at least improvise, make up a melody or something. That creative aspect of your playing is important and we need to leave practice time for that. All right, with that as our foundation, let's jump into it. If I've got, you know, 25 minutes or 30 minutes to practice, here's a good way to break it up. I'll take the first few minutes, five minutes, let's say, and I'm going to warm up. Guitar playing's physical. Guitar playing is quite physical. Uh, we got to get our hands moving. So I would do little finger stretching exercises like this. I would do uh, um, oh, a little finger, um, um, little things to adjust my fingers. Maybe little things to get my fingers warmed up and ready to learn. You know, a, a weightlifter would not go into the gym and expect to be able to put his uh, highest weight up 
by just uh, uh, when he walks into the gym. You got to warm up. Same thing. You want to play it. You want to play a, a bunch better without any effort. Warm up. Warm up before you play, folks. We just sit down and play. We start playing and we expect it to be there. If you spend five minutes before you practice actually getting your hands moving, just jump through some chords, work on some finger stretches, hand stretches, things like that. All right. Um, the next aspect of it, we're going to cover our first of our three pillars, is is uh, physical technique. What am What am I talking about there? All right. I'm talking about technical things that you can play on the guitar. Scales. But what good is scales? What good is scales? Scales are the alphabet of music. If you want to be able to speak and have have uh, you know musical thoughts and all and all that sort of stuff, you need to learn your scales. That's that's these are the notes that make up for it. Not that you're going to be doing that all the time, but your fingers need to know the roadmap. Your fingers need to know the roadmap of where to go. That's why this is important. They need to know the lay of the land. So we do scales, we do it maybe in thirds. Other little patterns. Maybe pentatonics. Whatever you're working on at the moment. If you're just learning, then maybe you're just working on getting your fingers to go where, where they're supposed to on the various frets. If you're more advanced, maybe you're doing chromatic scale. Maybe you're doing chords. doing chords. I'm working with a metronome during these times. I'm, I'm trying to get technical things done. Okay? Um, it does, you're working on arpeggios. I was working on arpeggios earlier today. I'm in the key of B flat. Maybe I'll do a B flat major. Maybe C minor next. Now, is there anything magical in actually the specifics? You want to be working on something that you can't do. That's the point. Something that you can't do or that you're trying to learn. Don't just go through things that you've been playing for years. You're not getting any better. Work on things at the edge of your ability. When you're practicing, you want to be reaching, reaching for that next skill, whatever it is for you. Okay? Um, jump, maybe it's jumping between chords. That's a good one. If you're having problems jumping between various chords, you could be working on that. Maybe on the metronome, you're holding it for four beats. And then you slowly crank the metronome up. Things like that. Okay? Spend, spend the first third of your time doing that. The second third of your time, you want to be now applying that knowledge that you've been just learning, chords and scales and things like that, to songs, to making music, okay? If, you, if all you do is play scales all day long, you're not going to be very, very uh, musical in your playing and nobody's going to want to hear you play your scales, okay? So you got to put these aspects into songs, whether it's just learning single melody songs Real, doing full arrangements. Let's see. It. How did I learn that? By working on the making music with songs. Okay, and you want to spend about a third of your practice time working on songs, applying the technical things that you know. Okay, here's here's another thought. If you learn a chord but you can't apply it into a song, it's useless to you, and it will quickly be forgotten. 
So as soon as you learn a new chord, vo chord voicing that you like, try and put it in a song. Let's say I'm trying to learn a C sixth, I'm trying to learn how to use it, then I immediately try and put it into a song. To where my fingers get used to grabbing that chord. If it's, an un if it's a complicated chord, I would try and put that in a voicing in a song. So I can apply it. You need to apply new things or they're gonna be quickly forgotten, okay? All right, so that's the first thing, is learning technical things. The second pillar is learning songs. The third pilling, pillar is now improvisation. And what am I talking about that? A lot of folks forget about this. They, they forget about this aspect of your playing. Okay, it doesn't mean that you have to be a great rock soloist or a great jazz soloist or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is exploring musically on your instrument. Now it can be jazz soloing or rock soloing or blues soloing and things like that, but it's expressing yourself, you, through your music, okay? So I, for sort of creative things, I put away all of my books and my song books and all that sort of, I put all that stuff away. And a good way to start is just by musically exploring on your instrument, okay? What does that mean? Well, you're gonna be your best teacher, okay? I teach all the time, and I've used tons of resources. I got tons of resources everywhere. Let me officially say, you, you are gonna be your best teacher. Not some new book, not some new magazine subscription, not some YouTube subscription, not some guy on the internet that tells you he'll make you a pro in, in, in five minutes and all you have to do is sign up for his class yada 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 there's a there's a gazillion of them i'm in that world i know i know about that it all it's all going to take hard work but one of the things that 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 helps is being able to explore on your instrument creatively just wander around on your instrument what do i mean let's say you're learning thirds on guitar maybe thirds and e Okay, that's cool. Well, what if I put that open B behind him? Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of wandering, letting my creativity... What if I split those up and just maybe triplets out of them? What if it's, instead of going one, two, three, what if I went one, two, or excuse me, thumb, two, one? What if I did, added that high E into it? What if I did thumb, two, one, three? exploring on your instrument. Now, some of you may just not know what to do. I get it. You may not know what to do. Just start. Find a chord that you like. Move, start moving it around. No, oh, that really doesn't sound too good. That kind of sounds cool. No, that didn't work. That didn't work. What if I did? What if I did this chord? What if I did this chord? It's not, it's not about playing E chords around. It's about exploring. Just find an idea. 
Find an idea. I don't care if you just sit there for 10 minutes and f fiddle around on your guitar. Find something that, that will spark your interest. You know, maybe just... Explore on your instrument. You may think that you have nothing to, to do unless somebody tells you to do it. And it's going to be frustrating at first, but eventually you're going to stumble upon a few things that you like, a few techniques that you might not have thought about before. That's the gold. That is the gold, the, the pure gold that you're looking for, is that's what's going to create your, your um, style and your interest on the, on the instrument. So there's three, there's three pillars technical ability that you need scales chords moving whatever whatever your ability is if it's just learning single notes that's great if it's playing advanced jazz chord substitutions that's where that would go second area is applying that technique to songs okay third area is then getting creative and exploring around your instrument maybe even doing some of those things that you were doing those technical things and see if you could make them into something musical three areas. If I have a 30 minute practice session, I warm up for five minutes and then do 10 minutes on each. That's the way to do it. Okay. And those are going to get you the skills that you need as a guitar player. So let's take a look at um, the practice tips that are beneath this. Okay. Um, here's some things that just help that help me. Um, number one, leave your instrument out. Okay, get a nice guitar stand or something like that if you're if you're if it's away from you know uh, kids or, or 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 something that we, if you're feared it's going to be knocked over or something like that then of course put it in its case but if it's in a place that's you know if you pack your guitar away and put it under your bed or in your closet and then you wonder why you never practice that's because it's not easy for you it's because it takes you ten minutes just to get the dumb thing out okay so get it out on a stand and have it close by where you can. When you've got a few minutes, you can grab it and it's there. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, when working on speed issues, use a metronome. Just grab, they have, they have tons of free metronome apps on the, uh, uh, on the phones these days. And so I got one that, that's called Metro Tuner, Metro Timer, I think, Metro, Metro Timer, Metro Tuner, I forget what it is. And uh, uh, it's free and it's all of the metronome that I ever need, okay? So when I'm working on speed, don't just try and play faster. No, no, speed comes by measurable amounts. So, oh, well, I'm gonna play it faster. Measure it with a metronome. Today I played it at 60. Tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna, my goal is to play it at 62 beats per minute, and then 80, and then 84 beats per minute, and that's how progress is made, okay? Uh, me metronome settings give you a concrete way of notating um, of w of notating practice. It takes it out of the hmm, I think I'm doing better, and gets it into here's the facts. I did it at 64 last week. That was as fast as I could get it. This week I could play it at 72 beats per minute. That's what you want. Concrete evidence. Okay, uh, that's what. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, work, work, you know, having a scale helps you, gives you, motivates you. Uh, uh, if you're doing lifting weights, uh, calculating how much weight you lifted, it's, it's a measure, whatever the thing is for you, it's a measurable way to determine that, okay? Take a look at the next one. So important, so important. Keep a practice journal, okay? Does this have to be a big elaborate thing? No. No, a thousand times no. Grab a dumb little spiral book uh, and, and just write down these different things. Don't know what a practice journal or practice log should look like? T flip the page. Okay? Flip the page. And I just included with you a little practice log, a little weekly practice log. Okay? Is this the, the, the way to do it? No, this is something I've just found that's helpful. Okay, and so how this works, and I even put a little sample one here so you can see what I do, you know. Okay, this week, I wanna work, this week, let's say is, is, is what does it say here? February 1st through the 7th. 
Okay, my goal is to practice 30 minutes a day. I'm gonna warm up, do finger exercises for five minutes. I'm gonna work on pentatonic scales, let's say. I'm gonna do that for 10 minutes. I'm gonna hear the songs I'm gonna work on, Blackbird and You Are My Sunshine. After that, in 10 minutes more, I'm gonna work on improvising over minor chords. And then I just write it off. On Monday, I did it 30 minutes. On Tuesday, I was able to do it uh, uh, 25 minutes and you just go it out from there. If you have to skip, you skip, that's fine. It's, a, it's just a way to keep you honest and to keep you motivated to where you can physically see how many times you're practicing. Okay, now some people really get into this and they, oh my goodness, I'm gonna practice you know, 60 and I'm gonna do by the letter of the law and I'm gonna do all that. Okay, that's great. Uh, don't go overboard with this, this is just a tool. But I find that it helps, it really does help. So write it down so that way you, you know how many times you practice, okay? All right, that's a little sample log that you can do. It doesn't have to be anything that fancy, um, but it's a, it's a good way to start, okay? Practicing, bottom of page two, practicing doesn't need to be a burden. Learn to love the times that you are away from everything and can work on just something that you want to work on. That's the main, that's the main things. Um, Okay, I hope you've gotten some, some help out of this. On, we've given you a 30-minute practice routine. I've given you some helpful hints on how to practice and what you should be practicing. Remember, practicing should be reaching. Practicing should be reaching. If you get dry during your practice times and it just becomes a burden, then, hey, skip it for a few days, but come back to it. Skip it for a few days to where get your, get your uh, mind around some other ideas and then come back to it. But don't just forget about it. Don't do it sporadically. I practice once and I'll practice again in a couple weeks. You're not going to get anything done. If you really want to get something done, practice even short amounts of time, but it has to be regular. Okay. What's the old adage to, for music students? Only practice on days that you eat. That was the, that was the old thing they would, they would tell, us, uh, tell us in music school. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Keep up the great work. Your music matters. This is important that you get better at it. You do it for yourself. You do it for your, your family, your kids. Okay, that they can see that you're sticking with something. You're creating a musical legacy in your family. We had no musicians in our family until my mom decided that she wanted a guitar player, and I was the unlucky one or lucky one that got the lessons. Okay, ever since that point in our family tree, all of my brothers and all of their kids have been musical. It, your journey practicing and musical is not just for you it's for a whole other people that are watching you trying to reach for your goal hey i'm steve Krenz for guitar gathering keep up the great work we will see you next time